April the 3rd, 2011, a simplistic My Little Pony fan game is submitted to the Brony fan site Equestria Daily simply titled Luna Game. Little did anyone know that this innocent little fan game would go on to become an internet legend and a mystery that would span over 10 years. The game, while popular in its day, has long been forgotten and I haven't seen any coverage of it or the mysteries and rumours that surround it. This is the story of Luna Game, one of the earliest creepypasta video games that rocked a fandom and started a decade-long search for its anonymous creator. Before we get into things, I'd just like to give a huge thank you to Current for sponsoring this video. These days, I don't think anyone wants to go outside more than they have to, especially to go to the bank. Banks are boring and you have to interact with other people, it's a nightmare. Well, thankfully, Current is here to help. Current is banking entirely on your phone. Current is 100% transparent with instant notifications and spending insights, plus you can get your paycheck up to two days early. No more waiting till the end of the week to buy the... The, the battle pass. <laughs> You're fully in control of your banking anytime, anywhere, and it's just super convenient. Plus, just look at the card. That is a uh, one cool looking card. Finance and banking stuff can be complicated, but Current is simple, authentic, and gives you full control over your money. Now you can buy that Hatsune Miku figurine in peace. Head to current.com slash izzy's izzzyzyzyz or head to the link in the description to get Current now. Thank you so much to the wonderful Current for sponsoring this video, and now let's get on with the story of Luna Game. To set the scene for the story, we first have to look back at the climate of fan communities and the internet back in the early 2010s. Despite the fact that Google was pretty widely available and used, I remember this period of the internet being absolutely rife with lies and false rumours. The talking Angela hackers, Alexandria's Genesis, all of those if you're reading this a girl will appear at the end of your bed at 1am if you don't send this to 10 friends posts. Snopes was a really big website back then before it just became American politics, I guess, and that's because so many weird lies were spread daily that there had to be a whole site dedicated to debunking them. The point I'm trying to get across is that rumours and urban legends spread like wildfire back then. I mean, to be fair, it does spread like wildfire nowadays too, but back then it felt like fun rumours instead of like... Yeah is it safe to eat horse medicine? <laughs> we also have to set the scene in terms of the brony community. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic premiered in October of 2010 and by 2011 the show's largely adult fanbase had grown enormously with dedicated fan sites, fan groups and fan forums popping up all over the internet. The fanbase would hit its peak much later around 2013 to 2015 but in the years prior despite how new the fanbase was it was still growing to be one of the largest on the internet. Equestria Daily was the most popular My Little Pony fan site at the time, serving as both a publication for Brony News and a platform to share fan creations made by the community. Fans were able to submit artwork, music, videos, and most importantly games to the site which would be shared to the site's audience of hundreds and thousands. On the 3rd of April, a simple platformer titled Lunar Game was submitted to the site as a downloadable file. Considering the fact that My Little Pony had only been out for about 6 months at this point, games were far more rare than art or fanfiction and got a lot of traction within the community. So excited by the prospect of playing a fun platformer featuring the internet's favourite emo princess, people downloaded the file Luna.exe, also known as Luna Game. Upon starting up the game, players would spawn into a simplistic level made of simple grass tile sets and would have to jump over obstacles and platforms to continue. The model was a simple, if not slightly off model, pixel sprite of Princess Luna, who was apparently also the princess of speedwalking. One of those very 2010s hyper pop remixes played in the background called Super Pony Be Evil and Charm by the musician Eurobeat Brony. The song is actually one of, if not the earliest My Little Pony song slash remixes available on the internet published in January of 2011 which just goes to show how pioneering and early Luna Game was. Anyway, as users proceeded through the level, the game would abruptly stop for a scary Pinkie Pie screamer. Ah. The computer freezed up, the mouse disappeared and players could do nothing but sit helplessly as the screamer played out. Once the game had closed itself, players were horrified to find their image and text files had been created on their computer with scary pony images and the phrase the end is nay. Get it? Because it's like nigh but but they're horses so it's 
so it's nay. <laughs> the backlash was immediate and intense, with users freaking out en masse and claiming that Luna Game was actually harmful malware or a virus in disguise as a game. It had infected their computers and run rampant, creating hundreds of files and glitching their PCs. Understandably, the idea of some horrible malicious virus disguised as a creepypasta game both terrified and enthralled people and the news quickly spread. That very same day, the founder of Equestria Daily, Sethisto, took the post down and apologised to everyone and also put a ban on all downloadable games. At 4.41pm on the 3rd of April, Sethisto wrote, quote, Yo-Yo Game Links Banned. Alright, I'm done with Yo-Yo Games. I thought they screened their stuff, but I guess not. Yo-Yo Games or any other plugin requiring game sites are now banned, so don't send them. DeviantArt slash Newgrounds slash other sites that don't require a download are perfectly fine. I apologise to everyone that was exposed to the Luna. The person that made it says they sent it to someone else to get some feedback and they got that back. For context, Yo-Yo Games is the company behind Game Maker Studio, the popular game creation software that Luna Game was created in. So yeah, the backlash was so severe that a mere few hours after it was published to the website, a hard ban on all executable files was issued and this was a ban that would stick for years. Despite how hard and fast EQD had cracked down, I mean understandable considering they thought they had just sent malware to thousands of their readers, the legend of Luna Game stuck. The select few that had played the game before it was deleted believed that it was a computer computer virus or some sort of creepypasta nightmare fuel and those who hadn't played the game latched onto every exaggerated tale they heard second hand about the haunted game. In this way, Luna Game became somewhat of an urban legend within the community, a real life creepypasta playing out in real time. Though to be fair, it definitely didn't fool everyone, many members of the community were unimpressed, calling the game cheap scareware or a mean-spirited prank. It's fair to say that the game had rocked the fandom, it was unprecedented both within the brony community and within the creepypasta community community. Though the idea of a haunted pixel.exe game is played out nowadays mainly due to the viral popularity of sonic.exe, Luna Game came out way before that and even before other similar creepypastas like Godzilla NES. Yeah, Luna Game was one of the first of its kind and that combined with how new and naive the brony community was, it really cemented it as a creepypasta legend. So with all this attention and hype mounting up, Luna Game 2 was an inevitability. The sequel was hosted on Mediafire and published to Equestria Gaming, a new launched Brony Gaming website, since, you know, it wasn't exactly welcome on Equestria Daily. It came out on the 30th of May, about a month and a half after the original. Its short development time can be explained by its simplicity, but there were a few elements added that would go on to become staples within the series. In Luna Game 2, the player model was changed from the original sprite, whose creator is actually unknown, to this sprite created by DeviantArt user Emerald Darkness. The topic of stolen art is one that has plagued the game since it first came out, and we will touch on that later. This game also introduced the theme of Luna falling to her death as after the Zalgo Pinkie Pie Screamer popped up, the player would continue through to the level until they reached a long drop off. With no choice but to jump down, Luna would fall for a while before a picture of her body appeared accompanied by the text, you died, and sinister music. Once again, players found themselves unable to close the game or move their mouse, though Luna Game 2 didn't create any extra files or images on the PC. Luna Game 3 came shortly after on the 11th of June, only two weeks after the second game. At this point, bronies from all corners of the fandom were eagerly awaiting these Luna Game drops, and so a website was made to catalog the games, update fans with Luna Game news, and keep track of any future projects the developer was working on. Unfortunately, though, this site gave no insight into the anonymous creator, as they had the site made by one of the Equestria Gaming staff members, Strawberry Spice, in order to maintain their anonymity. Luna Game 3 followed the series template to a T, starting off with a freaking hype remix of At the Gala, that song still slaps, by the way. The game started off as per usual, though this time set in a dark forest. When the player inevitably reached a hole in the ground, they had to jump down it, triggering a Zalgo Pinkie Pie screamer and a final scene of Luna's body at the bottom of the pit, which then opens its eyes, Woo! I say that sarcastically now, but back then this game had my nine-year-old self absolutely terrified. To me, it genuinely felt like some otherworldly deep web shit, despite the fact that even at the time it was criticised for its laziness and jump scares. Luna Game 4 was released on the 9th of July, just under a month after 3. As per usual, the player loaded in on a simple grass tile set, but after a few seconds they come to another large hole that they'd have to jump down. The player saw Luna hit the ground before the screen went black and text 
Netflix faded in reading, you've met with a terrible fate, haven't you? This quote is associated with The Legend of Zelda, though in this context more specifically the famous Zelda creepypasta Ben Drowned, which actually came out a mere few months before Lunar Game. However, I don't think there's any deeper meaning here other than just being a homage. The game would close itself and reopen after 15 seconds with the text, it didn't have to turn out like this, you didn't have to die, but now you're in my world. Interestingly, for the first time in the series there were stakes since the player had to outrun a bunch of shadows and could risk not getting the true ending if they failed. While the games had stopped creating files on the player's PC since even Equestria Gaming, the game's only host had begun to take a stance against it, the game still maintained that forbidden creepypasta vibe with a new mechanic where the game could only be played once. However, a program was developed in secret by the anonymous developer called Lunar Replay which allowed hardcore fans to play the game again. Fans were eagerly awaiting the release of Lunar Game 5, though what they got instead was a strange departure from the series often called the odd one out. Lunar Game Zero, a prequel to the first four games, released on the 15th of August well over a month after Lunar 4. Though this entry was labelled as the odd one out due to the extended fetch quest and dialogue at the beginning, at its core it had the same formula. Once the player had fetched enough items for one of the main six ponies, the level would become distorted and the player would be directed to talk to Pinkie Pie. As she excitedly shared dialogue about a party, Nightmare Moon would take over Luna's body and kill Pinkie Pie and the game ends with one of those crazy anime slice in half scenes. Again, after the screamer had played out and the game closed itself, it couldn't be replayed without Luna Replay. It was at this time that progress seemed to slow on the series. Fans were used to waiting a mere few weeks for new releases, but six months had elapsed since the last release. So fans took it into their own hands to continue the series and in early February of 2012, Luna Game 5, a fan-made spin-off was released. After collecting nine angel bunnies scattered around a simple tile set level, the player would follow a shadow pony to the next stage which was all red and shadowy and had distorted music playing of course. At this point the game had actually built up a pretty nice atmosphere, obviously spooky but not filled with cheap jump scares. Well all that went off the rails at the end when a Pinkie Pie PNG popped up and slowly faded into a screamer image before Luna was teleported to uh, Earthbound's Gygus level, and then the text you're next and Comic Sans would show up. Whoa, count me just, uh, spooked, scared out of my, sh shaken in my boots. <laughs> the release of this fan game seemed to spur the original developer into returning to the series after half a year, so finally Lunar Game End, the final installment in the series, was released to the public. Unlike other entries, this game had a trailer which was published to the website likely in order to whip up some hype. The game, taking inspiration from the fan game that had come before it, was far more subtle than the earlier entries, no longer relying on cheap jump scares. The game started like any other Luna game on a field at night and after running for a while, Luna would say that she was tired and needed to lie down for a rest. Suddenly the player would be transported to a simple white background which slowly morphed into a blue sky. Hilariously, the wiki explains this by writing that it resembles the void where Squidward ends up in the Spongebob episode SB129. I mean, I kinda see it. Anyway, the player proceeded across a glitchy grass plane before jumping down into a dark and creepy underworld having to platform to the end where a shadow would envelop them. Luna would wake up now surrounded by creepy shadow ponies, obviously taking inspiration from the fan game. After some more screamers, a showdown with Nightmare Moon and some more platforming, Luna would wake up for real this time surrounded by her friends. It largely had a happy ending with Luna claiming that she'd just had a nightmare and Pinkie Pie promising to throw her a party, though the final few moments show Luna doubtfully saying that she still feels like something's off and then Pinkie Pie transforms into Pinkie Mina in the last few seconds because of course she does. So that's Luna Game. I know it probably wasn't necessary to explain each game in such detail, but you know what, I wanted to share this wonderfully wacky 2011 creepypasta with you all. Now let's move on to the game's impact and the 10 year search for its long lost developer. The impact that this game had on the Bruni community and the creepypasta community in general can't be understated. YouTube Let's Plays had sort of begun to hit their stride around 2012, aligning perfectly with the popularity of Luna Game, but weirdly the series didn't really get any coverage until around 2014, presumably after the Sonic.exe Let's Play craze had struck. Suddenly, massive YouTubers like Lauren Side, some ordinary gamers, and even PewDiePie were playing these games and garnering millions of views, popularizing Luna Game even more. It got its own article on 
the Creepypasta wiki and the My Little Pony fan wiki, memes and fan art were made, and it even went on to inspire multiple other iconic My Little Pony Creepypasta games. After the first two Lunar games were released, Equestria Gaming ran a Creepypasta game contest which had numerous entries and really solidified Lunar Game as a pioneer of the genre. Other games inspired by the series include Story of the Blanks, which won the contest, Super Philly Adventure, and Flutterland. I remember I used to spend all my freaking time as a kid in the DeviantArt group called Best MLP Games, which compiled all the Flash fan games made by DeviantArt users. References to Lunar Game could be found in almost every one, whether they were a quote scary game or not. Super Pinky World, Pinky Jump, and Fluttershy's Bunny Rescue are a few games that come to mind, primarily being simple arcade games with optional Lunar Game inspired creepypasta levels. The creator of two of these games and a whole bunch more, Certainty Principle, even made a parody of the series called The Lunar Game, basically riffing on the basic design and cheap scares from the original. Creepy Princess Lunar based games kind of became their own specific genre, with not only multiple parodies like The Lunar Game and Lunar's Gohem 48, but remakes like Lunar Game 3D and standalone games like Bloodline Lunar.exe and Lunar Fun. By this point, I'm sure you get the gist. The series had cemented itself in the Internet Hall of Fame as the enigmatic and mysterious creepypasta that inspired countless artworks, fan fictions, and games to come. But there's still one question, a question that's gone unanswered for over 10 years. Who created Lunar Game? Lunar Game was submitted anonymously to Equestria Daily, and despite many people claiming to know who the developer is, or claiming to have talked to them or be a friend of theirs, they've never been found. In the early days, there was one person who believed that they found the identity through Bandcamp usernames, but this never eventuated. In 2019, a more promising lead was picked up by a Reddit user called Rainbow Laney. They wrote that they had stumbled across a strange YouTube channel called 5779361598723. This account had uploaded all of the song files from the Lunar Game series. Most of their videos were short clips of static creepypasta images with strings of numbers in the title and description, some of which have been translated to things like Princess Celestia and Hello. This user was also found on Reddit with a creepy layout reflecting their channel, though they only ever made two comments, one replying with the bro hoof emoji and the other linking to a Roblox shitpost. The user was also found on filmfiction.net, though their account was completely empty. My personal theory is and one that some YouTube commenters seem to share is that this project is just a failed ARG. The Zalgo text, the simple codes to decipher, the nonsensical creepy video uploads, all of this is classic beginner ARG content. I think that someone set out to make a My Little Pony slash Lunar Game inspired ARG around the years of 2018 to 2019 but gave up despite getting quite a lot of traction. Either that or they just wanted to archive the soundtrack to Lunar Game since it wouldn't be that hard for an outsider to source the music files from the game. I mean, I say Lunar Game soundtrack, but I mean most of it was just stolen Eurobeat brony songs from YouTube. <laughs> so we're left with someone's random Bandcamp account and a failed My Little Pony ARG, and we're no closer to finding the identity of the developer. In an age where it's hard to stay anonymous or retain any amount of privacy online, this developer of a basically famous game has done an amazing job at not letting anything about themselves slip. It seems like, unfortunately, we'll never know the developer's true identity. That was until two weeks ago. Shortly after I started researching for this video, I stumbled upon a Reddit post made by the user Lunar Anons made about two weeks ago. And frankly, what I found shocked me. The history of Lunar Game from the original creator. Hello, I am the creator of the creepypasta game series known as Lunar Game. I made the games over a decade ago now, and I wanted to write up a bunch of things about my process and thoughts on the series as a whole. If you want to read what I've written up, I've made a website for it here. I'm sure a few people have tried to come forward over the years as the creator of this series, but I wanted to share things from my perspective. In the end, whether or not you believe me is entirely up to you. I won't be trying to prove myself to anyone. At first, I was completely skeptical. Why come out with the truth now after a whole decade has passed? Could this really be the developer or just some random brony LARPing as the creator out of boredom? What were the chances that just after I started research for this video, which is an extremely obscure topic that I feel like only I care about, all this information comes out? It seemed too good to be true, so 
I went to the linked site to investigate. The site not only contained information about the development of the games, but contained easter eggs that no one had found, snippets of code from the game, and most importantly, an email belonging to the developer. We got in touch, and I'm stoked to say I think I might have got the first interview with the Lunar game developer since, like, 2011. I do really want to say thank you to Lunar Anon for answering all my questions, and just coming out with all this information in general. To answer the burning question of why exactly they waited a decade to finally reveal themselves, they replied, quote, There were a few reasons to come out and talk about this now. I have a few IRL friends that know I made Lunar games, some of them are also in the fandom when I made it as well, and my partner in particular has been asking me to write something about the series for a while. When I heard about the soon-to-be-released G5, I figured it would be a good time to finally come out and talk about the series as a whole, kind of like wrapping up G4 in my own personal way. Using Lunar Anon's websites and the emails that we exchanged, I was able to kind of piece together the truth about this strange and mysterious game from 10 years ago. Firstly, Lunar Game wasn't an attempt to sabotage EQD or some sort of haunted creepypasta deep web game. Luna Anon wrote, quote, I had originally made the game as a prank for some friends in an old IRC chat that I was part of way back in the early days of the fandom. I submitted it to EQD anonymously to avoid the backlash I knew would happen. While the game wasn't malicious, it was still a prank of sorts. I decided to stay anonymous for two reasons. The first was because it actually added to the whole feel of the creepypasta. Anonymous creator really fit in with the whole feel of creepy I was going for by the time I started making the second game. The other reason was that I wanted to be able to walk away from it without having the whole thing follow me for the rest of my internet life. This bit has proven to be one of the best decisions I made with the series. I was able to leave the fandom entirely and just enjoy other media without people calling me the creator of Lunar Game. They also wrote that a short static YouTube video of a creepy Apple Bloom and Zalgo Pinkie Pie with distorted music was the inspiration for starting the series with Luna Anon's ripping the Pinkie Pie image straight from the video. Secondly, Lunar Game was not a virus or malware. With the game being made in Game Maker, Luna Anon didn't have the knowledge nor the tools to create anything actually malicious, instead just using a few simple Game Maker functions. Things like creating image and text files on the player's computer, hiding windows, and moving the cursor. This created the illusion that the PC was frozen or infected with a virus, but really they were just simple and harmless game mechanics. Thirdly, I wanted to ask them whether there was any underlying plot or storyline to the games. As a kid, I always wondered if the kind of tragic backstory of Luna kind of played into the themes of the game, and the answer is the kind of, but not really. The general premise was Luna was suffering from nightmares and regrets from all the horrible things she did as Nightmare Moon. If you take all the games as happening linearly, these might all just be recurring nightmares where she's suffering from the thoughts of what could have been, where either her life ends tragically or she ends the lives of others. All in all, there was no grand story planned for this series and I just took the premise of Luna falls down, horrible things happen, and rolled with it. Luna Anons wrote that they tend to fixate on a single project for an extended period of time, explaining why they were were able to churn out six games within the span of just a year and why they were so quick to lose interest and drop Lunar Game completely. They seemed to lose interest in the series by the time Lunar Game Zero rolled around both losing confidence in the audience and their own game making skills. Quote, After making Lunar Game 4, I wanted to try something different. I was using my time making these games to learn how to do various things in Game Maker and I wanted to have something a bit more story oriented. I suppose my idea of fun was a maze fetch quest. In reality, I still had no idea what I was doing and even at the time I don't think I enjoyed it much. I just knew people would power through it to see what horrible things happened to everyone's favourite moon princess next. At the time, I had big ideas for the series. This was going to be the prequel entry that explained how Luna ended up in this endless loop of death from the games prior. Unfortunately, after creating this title, I lost interest in developing the Lunar Game as a series. This was until a fan project sparked my interest again. After the release of the highly anticipated Lunar Game 5 made by a fan instead of the original creator, it seemed to spur Lunar Anons on to make a proper ending for the series. Six months had passed since the last Lunar Game was released when Lunar Game 5 was published by a different creator. At the time, I saw this as a challenge to myself, so I started work on the real ending of the Lunar Game series. I could no longer name it Lunar Game 5 because the fan game had taken that so I went with Lunar Game End. I tried building some hype for the finale of this series though I'm honestly not sure how much people in the fandom cared about it at this point. It was by far the most ambitious game I'd made up until that point featuring some simple cutscenes, more gameplay and mechanics I didn't know how to do before. It was also the only entry to include easter eggs. I published the final entry shortly after and that would be the last time I'd work on Lunar Game. It was already well into 2012 and I believe that people would 
lose interest in the series at this point. I certainly had lost interest in making them. I asked Luna and Nons about their identity and whether anyone had actually discovered who they were over the years and their response was no, no one had even come close. They didn't have a band camp account and they hadn't been in the fandom since like 2013. Which means that weird YouTube account is nothing more than a dropped ARG or someone's Luna game based art project. In terms of their actual identity, while understandably they don't want to share it at this point, they did share a few factoids. They never ended up going into game development but now work in systems administration and IT, are happily married and have dabbled in other fandom content though nothing like Luna Game. When asked about any regrets they had with the games, they wrote, My biggest regret is stealing art and music to make the game series. Not only did I not ask for permission but I also didn't even credit the artist and the worst part is when I looked for the original pieces later I saw they were flooded with comments about Luna Game rather than the art itself. I still feel super bad about that to this day and tried to do at least a little good by listing them on the website I made. Other than that, I regret not spending more time making the games actually fun. People may have different views on this but when I replayed them recently to make sure they work still, other than the creepy vibe and jump scares, nothing about them stood out too much to me. I might just be being overly harsh on myself because I made them but I really do wish I'd spent more time making a fun game first and then adding the creepy vibe later. Also, I hate jump scares now but that's a different story entirely. It's true that the game was criticised both for stealing art assets without credit and for being too simple and reliant on jump scares. But to be fair, I remember using these exact pixel sprites in poorly made scratch games when I was a kid and I feel like awareness about online art theft, especially within fandoms, was way less prominent than it is today. Back then I feel like it was pretty common for cheap fan projects to steal low quality PNGs from YouTube videos or fan forums, passing them around thousands of times without credit. It is unfortunate but thankfully most artists have now been credited on the website. Ultimately, while the true identity of Luna Anons remains a mystery, the fact that we're getting any information about this obscure, mysterious creepypasta after 10 years is pretty amazing. There are plenty of mysterious games and projects floating around on the internet, but like how often is it that you get an update after a decade? Maybe I'm the only one that cares about this mystery, but you know, it's my channel, I'm gonna force my obscure 2011 brony obsessions onto you. If you're looking for something kind of funny and goofy to play, or are just looking for a hit of pony nostalgia, Luna Anons actually went through and rebuilt all of the games for Game Maker 2. I'll link their website down below where you can find a ton of fun Luna game trivia, development information, and links to both the original and new game builds. The story of this game truly fascinates me from its origins and early fandom culture, to the combination of factors that led to its rise to fame, to its viral popularity online, to its fade into obscurity, and completely unexpected update. 2021 Luna game update is not what I expected this year, but maybe it's what I needed. Thank you guys so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, if you couldn't tell by how excited I am, this is a topic that really, really interests me. Um, I know it's really obscure and probably no one cares, but genuinely, I love this topic and I'm so excited to be sharing it. It's one of those ones where I'm just, I'm hype. And it's so cool that we got all this new information about it. And yeah, it's great that I can share it with you. And again, thank you to Luna Anons for answering all my questions. I was shocked to find out that someone had actually come forward about it. And yeah, it's just amazing. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you ever have any other suggestions for things you want me to cover, definitely let me know. Um, as I said, I have merch, so check that out in the description. And again, thank you to Current for sponsoring me. And I think that's enough thank yous for now. So um, yeah, <laughs> I will see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, how, how's my outro go? I hope, hope to see you guys in the next video. Hope to, uh, bye. <laughs> A huge thank you to my Garfield overlords over on Patreon. Red Meth, Joe Bradshaw, Brianna Robinson, Vampiric Misfit, John Charles Davy, Arcantilus, Astrium Vortex, Dozo Blint, Helm Hamburger Hand, Jesse Chisholm, Komono My Gyro, Lady Cerebellum, Sheriff Whiskey, Sophie Skidder, The Furby Librarian, Tyson, Missy Pendragon, Agarafin, Finley, Grip Gunderson, John Leach, Pom, Xavier Araujo, Charlie B, Simon, Jordan Nielsen, Dana Home Gardener, Mothem, Boysenberry Switchblade, SHSL Sunsun, Chicory, Doug, Sixum Jones, and Samsung Account. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, it means the world. If you want to join these guys on Patreon, the link will be in the description, and yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!